uh, today we're going to do problem one for exam one. This is our second take. Now, in this problem, we have a disc, a flat disc, the radius of radius r. Now, it has a uniformly distributed charge, q, here. Uh, the radius to the thin ring of charge is r and has a thickness, the thickness here from here to here is dr. Problem A asks us to calculate the infinite, infinitesimal electric field, de, along the x-axis due to the ring. Now, let's, let's along the x-axis, but let's do the y-axis and the z-axis first. So now if we have a ring like so, we have the x-axis here, you have the y-axis here, you have the z-axis here. Now, for every y, there will be a negative y. And for every z, there will be a negative z. Now, whenever you add up the electric charge along these axes, they will equal zero. So the electric field for this ring along the y-axis, it will be zero, as well as the z-axis, that will also be zero. I should write. Okay. Now, the x-axis. So let's look at that. Now, um, th this is also part B, um, interestingly enough. Um, for B, we have well, a, an electric field due to a charge, Q is given by this equation. Now, to solve this, we have to look at the small section of the disk, dq. So we have to look at this section, this section right here, and at the distance x from the center. So this equation, when we look at it, what will the charge be here? Well, this charge will be equal to this, um, it will be the infinitesimally small uh, charge will be given by uh, DE equals K DQ over hypotenuse squared. Now this is the hypotenuse here. So let's substitute values for the hypotenuse of known, of known let's use uh, r and x. So the hypotenuse squared is actually going to equal r squared plus x squared. It'll be this squared, it's a simple Pythagorean theorem. Now, again, uh, our electric field along the y-axis will be zero. So we only have to look at this angle, sorry, this angle right here, and the cosine of that angle. So what we're looking at is this cosine theta. But what is cosine theta in terms of known variables? Well, cosine theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So let's substitute that in. Then the equation becomes this, the x divided by hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse, by the way, is this, the square root of that. So we'll multiply like so. So let's just rewrite for clarity. So DE is going to equal K DQ times x, and this times this is going to give us r squared or x squared to the 3 halves. OK, so now we have this equation. Let's change dq in terms of dr. So let's look at that. That's dq equals lambda dA. And also, dA equals 
2 pi r dr. Combining these, we will get dq will equal lambda 2 pi r dr. Now let's substitute this back here. So the equation becomes 2 pi r dr divided by that. Now we integrate. Upon integration, we pull out all of our constants outside of the integral, so it'll look like this. It'll be 2 k pi integral r dr and this. So now using um, u substitution, we can actually get um, a simplification. We'll get the, the answer. We'll just skip over and I'll just give you the solution to this integral. Okay, and this is our answer, equals E. Okay, um, I forgot to mention that this X actually comes out, and it's here. I forgot to place it, so X, and the limits from 0 to R. So once we integrate, we uh, solve this integral, we'll get this the x will be up here, and everything will be fine. Okay, so just to remind us that this is A, and this is the answer for B. Now C, over here, asks us to determine the electric field when big R, the radius of the disk, divided by x is much less than zero. Is this result expected? Well, let's do that. So let's, we have to do a little bit of um, uh, algebraic gymnastics, as the professor mentioned in class. So let's just take this part here. Let me bring it out over here. So let's put x divided by x squared plus r squared times 1 half. Now, what we have to do here is we have to multiply both sides by 1 over the square root of x squared divided by 1 over square root of x squared. So basically, we're just multiplying by 1. So this becomes, so x divided by x, which is 1. Now here, we can actually plug it in. We can actually uh, divide into this. So it's going to be x squared. This is, Remember, this whole thing is is uh, the square root of. So x squared divided by x squared will give us, uh, I'll just write it, 1 plus r divided by x squared, and all of this to the 1 half. So now we have something we can use. So let's rewrite the whole equation. This, let me, I'm, I will rewrite it over here. This equals 2 pi k sigma 1 minus, now instead of this, I will use this. To the 1 half. Now, the problem says that r divided by x is much less than 1. So that means that this, this part right here will approach 0. Now, if this approaches 0, the equation does something very interesting. So we have here is going to be 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 0 to the 1 half. 
what is this? This whole thing goes to zero. And the electric field will be zero newtons per coulomb when r divided by x is much less than zero. And this is our answer for C. All right, so part D asks us to determine the electric field when x divided by r is much less than one. So in, just like we did last time this little algebraic gymnastics, we're going to do it again, but instead of dividing by, I'll, I'll rewrite it over here, we're gonna take this part, portion again, it's gonna be x divided by x squared plus r squared, one half. Now, we're going to multiply, just like we did over here, instead of the square root of r squared, we're gonna multiply by one over the square root of r squared. Now, in case you're wondering why we did that, well, when we did it over here, it gave us this beautiful uh, ratio, r over x, and that's what we were asked to look at with c. Now, because they're asking x over r, we would do this so that we can get this nice little x over r. This would give us x divided by r divided by the square root. I will write the square root this time. It's the same thing as 1 half. Um, it's going to be x divided by r. That's going to be squared plus 1. r squared divided by r squared. So now, we take this part and we plug it back into this equation that we got for b. So let me do that. It'll be e equals 2 pi k sigma 1 minus, and then instead of this part, we substitute it for this. Now, the problem asks uh, to determine the electric field when x divided by r is much less than zero. And look, x minus x divided by r, that's beautiful. How easily we can uh, calculate it. So this, when x divided by r is much less than zero, that means it'll be, it'll approach, I'm sorry, is much less than one. It will approach zero. So this equation becomes two pi k sigma, one minus zero divided by the square root of zero plus one. So our answer is that the electric field will equal two pi k sigma newtons per coulomb when x divided by r is much less than one. And that is our answer for D.